some things I need of you, things you may not understand, you may not wish to do, but please do not make the same mistakes I did. My father, Howard, deserted me before I was born. I could claim the loss of my mother, and the letter I received after her funeral blinded me to what I had to do. It would be a lie. Human nature sealed my downfall. My name is Philip. If we are lucky, and by the time you receive this, I will be dead. If fate frowns, we all perish. Hello everybody, this is uh, part one to Penumbra Overture, so finally getting into it. Uh, hopefully you followed all the other videos uh, related to this, and now we're ready for the gameplay. I've already gone through and set up my options and made sure they're okay, so uh, we'll get going here. I'm going to play a normal story began in February, year 2000. For my part in this allegory, I'm not going to make the same mistakes my father made. Howard vanished from my mother's life before I was even in it, so when he sent me a letter a few days after Mum's funeral, it was the first I'd ever heard from him. But he was dead. Writing from beyond the grave must be a genetic habit in my bloodline. His letter contained a key, instructions, pleas for forgiveness. I figured the dead don't have much use for absolution, so I turned to his prophetic passing, which he inexplicably expected to come any day. Clearly averse to explanations, my father preferred to leave directions to a bank on Mayfair I'd never even heard of. In that bank was a safety deposit box in his name, and myself as executor. Of course, I went, as he knew I would. I discovered that despite the evidence, he'd been legally declared dead almost 30 years ago, and so the old book and collection of notes I found had, in the eyes of the law, been mine all this time. My father's instructions were to burn the documents, raise no further questions. But that was his error. No man's immune to the shameful trappings of curiosity, and my humanity got the better of me. The university I taught at was world-renowned for two things, physics and linguistics. I represented the first, and the man who stood for the second was stumped by my recent acquisition. The book was indecipherable. The notes, however, showed a location somewhere in uninhabited northern Greenland. It took me almost a year to book the last flight I'd ever taken. As I watched civilization disappear along with Heathrow, I realised my father had disappeared three decades ago, almost to the day. And I considered in turn what it was that I was leaving. We landed on a strip of ice a few feet wide, and within minutes I was pulling away on a chartered boat, beginning the 12 hour journey that would lead me into my past. Finally, we're almost docked. I'd better stow my gear. I may be far from home, but chances are I can still pick things up using left mouse, and I can take a closer look at things using right mouse. Alright. So yeah, basically, anything you can interact with, which is a lot of things, if it's a hand and you left click, then you'll either take it or you'll pick it up. And the right hand or the eye icon, if you right click on something with the eye icon, it'll tell you more about it. I'm certain this map's a good decade old or so out of date, but landmarks don't change much in Greenland. So I've got a pretty decent idea of where I'm heading. So I'm going to try to read, you know, things in these games, not just this game, but all games, unless it's spoken, then I don't need to. But this game's got a lot of written notes, uh, so there's a lot of reading in this game. Whiskey empty. Shame. A good scientist always keeps a pen and paper handy just in case. 
so yeah, you can pick things up. And in Amnesia the Dark Descent, the series after this, uh, you can zoom in and out of things and manipulate them more. And this one's just pick them up, put them down, or if you're holding it with the left mouse, you can throw it with the right. So Take that. Always good to have a notebook in to jot down interesting information and key reminders. I think I left my torch in the desk drawer next to the bed. It can be opened using my left mouse on it, holding the button down and moving the mouse. Right. So you can jump, crouch, which I have toggled. Uh, you can run. Um, this is the notebook. You have your to-do list. Here's the uh, dark mod for the notes in action. Uh, notes. These will fill in as time goes. Uh, let me get the light out of the way. This is the inventory. Right now we have a key. The padlock key. The key from the old padlock. Uh, this is your battery meter for your flashlight. 50% battery power left. Uh, fit as can be. This is your health. So this represents your health, which changes color and body posture depending on your damage. And then this fills in or depletes. You have a lot of inventory slots. And then the one through nine are like hotkeys representing the one through nine on the keyboard. So if you get a weapon, say like a crowbar, and you drag that crowbar onto a slot, with the key here on one. Then when you press one, he'll he'll bring that item out. So it's kind of cool, kind of helpful. I usually drag these kind of things down in the bottom corner because they never leave the inventory. Uh, so yeah, that's the inventory system, the notebook. Um, I said you can lean left, right, even when you're crouched. So. It's uh, mainly for peeking around corners, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, this one option, I just kind of figured out what it did. I wanted to explain it. Um, if I can find it. Interact mode, which I've made the period key on the number pad. What that does is, right now this is normal movement, where the cursors, the crosshair is kind of in the middle of the screen. If you press that, Keybind, uh, it changes into like a hand kind of interact mode, and the screen doesn't move until the cursor hits kind of the sides. So it's a way for you to kind of, like, say you wanted to mess with this can, um, it's a way for you to not really move the orientation of the screen while you're trying to mess with objects or place objects. Whereas if you're in the normal view, the camera moves with you whenever you're doing stuff. Uh, so that's basically it uh, for controls. Um, frictional games engines for the games are always very physical, uh, interactive. Um, especially in Amnesia, uh, The Dark Descent, you end up solving a lot of in puzzles using the environment. It's in this game too, but it's it's not uh, it's not used as much as it is in Amnesia. So he said here. So if you hold down until the hand grips, and then you move the mouse, it'll slide the drawers open. There it is. Flashlight switches on and off via the I inventory. Hopefully, with the shortcut key, wheel up. I made my mouse wheel up, do it. Now, where's that emergency glow stick? Should still be in the locker. Key is in my inventory. So, here's a flashlight. Batteries run out. So, this is how you monitor. And you get batteries as you progress. You find them in the, in the world. I was uh, testing the game earlier in this spot, just making sure stuff was going to work. And looking around, 
And over here, a photo of the fisherman's wife. She's no Playboy bunny, but she looks loving and kind. If you look at this picture here where the eye is, the one that it's above, I bring the camera this way. I think that's Dolly Parton. I'm pretty sure that's Dolly Parton. <laughs> and they probably didn't have the rights to uh, put her in here like that, but I think that's her. Can't tell what the other ones are. Anyway, I like looking at stuff. I don't speed through games just to get through them. I like to look at the details and go to the dead ends, even if I know the way I'm going is the way forward. So I tend to take time with the games I play. Zelda chest. Another wine bottle. Here's a note. Fisherman's wife's love letter. Dear Steric, just a quick note before you set sail and leave me once again. I've left you a little something to remember me by in the chest at the foot of your bed. I really don't know why you still only have one bed on board. Taking shifts because of it is no way to get your rest. But what does a fisherman's wife know of life at sea? I'll be praying every night for you to make the catch you need so that you can come home to me safely and soon. Please don't be gone for five weeks like last time. I know I might nag sometimes, but I do love you, you know. I've washed those overalls of yours. I know you'll get them covered in assorted fish parts in no time, but I still feel better knowing they've had a wash. Before I forget, the Henriksons in the village have asked me to see if you'll be coming by any trout, but I said they were mostly out of season. If you do happen upon any, don't say anything. Stow them well on the ice, and I'll do something special with them to celebrate when you come home to me. The ship's captain deserves a little special treatment once in a while. Take care, my love. So yeah, these little corners is how you flip the pages and get to the next one. And now that is in our notes, so we can reference it again. Nothing in the to-do list yet, because we don't have any objectives. So we can't take this map. There's actually, there's maps in the areas you're in when you get into them. They're on walls and stuff, but you can't take this one. All right, so got our flashlight and over here. Always travel with a padlock, handy key, preferably mine in the inventory. So we open up the inventory double click the item, it turns red, and then when you hover it over what it's able to be used on, it turns, turns, uh, kind of glows, but then it turns red. Actually didn't work. There. Red means you're actually not on it. <laughs> it has to glow. So you open it just like a drawer. Good thing I have my torch wheel up at hand this county country seems I think it's a permanently veiled in darkness or something. This glow stick could come in handy if the torch runs out of batteries I should be able to access it through my inventory or with the shortcut key wheel down. That should be everything I need I want to get going before dark. And then there's batteries here too. Awesome extra batteries to power the flashlight. Then you can read about stuff in here if you right click on them or just hover over. Yeah, you just have to hover over it. It's an old padlock, sure, but it still works, so he took that with him. Good thing I remember to bring a flashlight. Shame it's so old it drains a couple of batteries an hour. And then the glow stick. A little ghoulish, but should be a decent fallback if the torch cuts out. And when they're on or off, you know, they have like a... Actually double click them to turn them on or use the shortcut key. I'm just putting these things down here, like, for now, because these are always going to be here. And the game won't actually let you leave this room until you pick up these things. So, here's the glow stick again. It kind of moves with you, it's kind of cool. Glow stick never runs out, flashlight does. The glow stick is more for lighting your closest surroundings to you. Um, and the flashlight is for more illuminating uh, 
areas farther away. So I'm gonna make a quick save. We'll test it. Yep. Load me back in. Yeah, I'm gonna be using quick saves and quick loads in this game, and I would not be surprised if uh, we experienced some crashes, but there shouldn't be too many, hopefully. All right. This next part's a little loud, and there's some text I might not be able to read because it's hard to see, but I'm going to do my best to read things that need to be read. All right, here we go. As I stepped off the boat, setting out into the blizzard that had formed around me, I realized how utterly devoted I had been to the discovery of my father's past. I had no idea what to expect. Soon enough, my concerns were justified. I don't know whether I lost my orientation or my spirit first, but I lost feeling in my extremities soon after and knew hypothermia was setting in. I started looking for shelter. So cold, don't know where I am. Need shelter soon. So we're just here. My entire head went numb a long time ago, but I can hear the wind blowing past, or is that some kind of animal in the distance? Kind of got to hurry here and lose health. If I click and hold the interact button left mouse, I should just about manage to pick up that rock. The colds made me weak, but I can still throw things using the examine button right mouse when I'm carrying something. So yeah, you want to take it with you. And you actually move slower when you're carrying heavy items. Okay, I'm just kind of tossing it. He's interact. I can swing the stone more accurately. That's putting me in like the use item mode. You don't have to do that. I jotted a note down. Can't get in. The ice is too thick. I'm just talking about this. It's fro frozen solid. Must break ice. So that's what this is for. Just bang it. turn that wheel. These things are always kind of awkward to turn. <laughs> there you go. Click, lift up, and then... This is a door opening. It looks like a book. That means you can open something and go down. It's noisy right now to get quieter. I can't believe I fell that far and survived. Although looking around, maybe I didn't. What is this place? I should have known that rusty old ladder wouldn't hold my weight, but I didn't have any choice. I'd rather die down here than suffer the cold any longer. So you can see how this illuminates our uh, close area. The flashlight lets us see further down. Can't even really see that door with the glow stick out. But yeah, you gotta be judicious with your flashlight usage. <laughs> we run out of batteries. But you can always bust out the glow stick. A heavy looking wooden barrel could be anything inside. You know? Uh, empty boxes of ammunition. What is this place? Limited. Limited. I have no idea what that says. 105 ammunition. I don't know. Emergency exit procedures. Can't read it. Quick save. Here's a metal rod. You can kind of see when you look at it, it glows. It's the glowing thing. Okay, steel rod. A metal rod. Yes, it is. So I'm going to put this on one. Didn't think it would do that. Huh. Just trying to get 
get my uh, controls right here. Basically, door. To bear with me a moment. So that's not really a weapon. Okay. So we don't want to put that there then. It's not really the weapon. Yep, you see it glowy over there. So these things you can't lift directly up, they're too heavy. But if you uh, left click hold and then move your movement keys, he'll drag it. By the way, if you didn't catch in the intro, our character's name is Philip. A heavy looking wooden barrel. Yep. So yeah, sometimes there's stuff behind it. Behind barrels. It's a flare, it could be handy as a light source. It's a flare, it could be handy as a light source. These I don't tend to use too much. Um, they're there, but uh, they only last a little amount of time. And I can always use the glow stick. There's a little flare. Door. I hope it's open. No, it's not. It's stuck. There must be something in the way. And when you hear the little scribble, uh, that means he took a note. Not a note, a to-do list. I mean, some kind of underground installation, but the only door out of the room I'm in is locked. I need to find some way around. So yeah, always check your to-do list when you hear a scribble or just in general if you're lost or stuck. That's how you get your little hint. This is obviously open. It's a 24-hour ration pack long past its cell date. No description. Flare. And a hammer. Let's see, I can swing this hammer if I hold left mouse. I can make a back swing by pulling the mouse right and then following through by pushing left. The opposite works too, pulling back and then thrusting forward produces a stabbing motion. I reckon if I hold down right mouse after the backswing, I should still be able to look around. So these shelves are as old as everything else around here. It could be 50 years since anyone's been down here. Um, okay, so this is a weapon. This hammer's seen some action in its time, so I'm going to put that on one. Now, he brings that out in his other hand. The light sources are always in the left, and the weapons are always in the right. But since we, uh, under options, controls, or is it game? Game. Since we did simple swing on, uh, it's a lot easier to uh, use these weapons. You can just hold the right mouse button with the hammer out, or maybe you have to might have to put that away. No, you don't have to do that. Okay, there we go. Left mouse button. So if you hold it down, he does just kind of a swing. And if you tap it, then he does like a thrust. And that's all you gotta remember. Hold down or tap. It's a lot more diff difficult to um, manipulate weapons without having simple swing on, so I just rec recommend having it on. Now that we have a hammer, we can bust these open. I don't think there's ever anything inside of them, but I don't remember. So, uh, bust these out here too. swing is obviously more powerful, but when you get better weapons that have longer reach to them, the poke is a little better because it can keep dudes a little farther from you. I don't even think you can break these. I like in these frictional games how uh, you can manipulate so much stuff. And yeah, if you have a, a weapon out, you can't interact or pick up things. That was interesting. <laughs> so, you have to put your weapon away when you want to pick up something or interact with something. What do you know? 
The hole's been boarded up a long time ago. The wood looks pretty soft. So put the hammer away. And then you can... It's like the barrels. You, uh, I'm holding it and moving to the side and then pushing right. And it makes them knock it over. Yeah, and this part's kind of weird. It just kind of keeps looping on itself. That's where we came from. Yeah, so this is the only way to go. The hatch is seriously solid. It won't open by hand. Someone obviously wanted to keep people out or in. Ooh. All right. And here's what was blocking it. I wonder why I couldn't open the door. So let's take three swings. Same thing like with doors, I kind of it's kind of caught on that board of the barrel. I kind of grip it with the mouse and then I tend to move the direction I want to open it. It seems to make them open easier. This looks like some kind of industrial mechanism, although there's a hole in the center and a way to operate it. Well, that's what this is for. body weight because it's easier than trying to turn turn it. Controls are a little jank in this game. Whatever I was descending into, it was a hundred feet below ground, protected by two solid metal hatches, located in a remote arctic wilderness and buried beneath the snow. I didn't know what to expect, but it made me feel something I hadn't felt since I was a child. I'd never given it much thought before, but I realized that our entire society is a network of safety nets, emergency services at the end of the phone line, health and safety in the workplace, friends, family, lovers, all there if something goes wrong, part of a carefully designed structure to prevent all but the most mundane of emotions. Once again, I felt like I did when I was in school, surrounded by a closing ring of older kids knowing anyone that might help me, friends, parents, teachers, were too scared or too far away. Jot it down a note just in case. The entrance to the cave is caved in. There must be another way out. Could be anything living down here. Heroics are for Hollywood actors and fairy tales. I'm not taking any chances. If I face off against anything down here, I won't last a second. Caution and stealth are my only defenses now. If anyone or anything hears me, I'd best uh, I'd be best off staying low and out of sight until I know whether or not it's a threat. Crouching by pressing uh, my keybind will give me the chance to hide in the shadows. I'll know I've got it right because of the blue tint to my vision. Plus, I should be quiet enough that I won't be heard unless. Something's right on top of me. Better remember to shut off any light sources, though. So, yeah. Things in this game can... S my best bet is to hide for a couple of seconds or so, perfectly still. That'll make... That'll make me probably hidden. Properly hidden. I thought it said prob probably. Like that, I'll be virtually invisible, and after some time, I should get my night vision back. Provided I stay still. So, when you crouch... It kind of does this, and that lets you know that uh, you're in stealth mode, basically. Um, I 
doesn't work when you have lights out because you're seen. So you need to turn any light sources off and crouch. Even when you move, it makes you come out of it when you're crouched. So you just need to stand still. So I'm just looking around. Heavy but I could lift it could do a lot of damage to anything underneath it. Okay. Great. Well, that's the 30 minute video already, but this is the beginning of the game, so there's a little to explain. So I'm gonna end part one here and I will see you in part two. Thanks for watching. Bye.